you can join us for our online service. May God bless you with his holy word, strengthen you. Please hit subscribe, hit um, share button. Uh, make sure you share a comment or share this video with a friend. I pray that God's word will strengthen you and encourage you. And let's begin with a word of prayer. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanksgiving. We thank you for the privilege of serving you. We thank you that you've called us to be your disciples, your followers, and that you've given us the ability to partner with you to influence the world, to influence the people around us, to change the eternity of those in our community. Lord, we thank you for those opportunities. Lord, we ask that you will use us as your instruments, and we ask that, that you will mightily, that your gospel would touch the lives of people around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beneath the rising sun, shining with bright forms, like an athlete strong, set to on the course birds soar high Please join me for confession and absolution. Spirit of truth, we confess that we have not loved one another as you have loved us. We are quick to find fault and speak ill of others. We have not done our best to carry out, carry the good news of Jesus Christ beyond the walls of the church. 
forgive our casual disregard of Jesus' command to go and make disciples. Forgive us for not using faithfully the powerful gifts of love and service you gave the church at Pentecost. Renew a right spirit within us that we may carry the love and mercy of Christ into our world. Amen. Upon this your confession, I have virtue my office as a called and retained servant of Christ and by his authority forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first reading is from Jeremiah, the 28th chapter, beginning at the 5th verse. Then the prophet Jeremiah replied to the prophet Hananiah before the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. He said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words you have prophesied by bringing the articles of the Lord's house and all the exiles back to this place from Babylon. Nevertheless, listen to what I have to say to your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. From early times, the prophets who preceded you and me have prophesied war, disaster, and plague against many countries and great kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesies peace will be recognized as one truly sent by the Lord only if his prediction comes true. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans, the seventh chapter, beginning at the first verse. Do you not know, brothers and sisters, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law has authority over someone only as long as that person lives. For example, by law, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law that binds her to him. So then, if she has sexual relations with another man while her husband is still alive, she is called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is released from that law and is not an adulteress if she marries another man. So, my brothers and sisters, you also died to the law through the body of Christ, that you might belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit for God. For when we were in the realm of the flesh, the sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in us, so that we bore fruit for death. But now, by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law, so that we serve in the new way of the spirit, and not in the old way of the written code. What shall we say then? Is the law sinful? Certainly not. Nevertheless, I would not have known what sin was had it not been for the law. For I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said, you shall not covet. But sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, produced in me every kind of co coveting. For apart from the law, sin was dead. Once I was alive apart from the law, but when the commandments came, sin sprang to life and I died. I found that the very commandment that was intended to bring life actually brought death. For sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, deceived me, and through the commandment put me to death. So then, the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, righteous, and good. Did that which is good then become death to me? By no means. Nevertheless, in order that sin might be recognized as sin, it used what is good to bring about my death, so that through the commandment sin might become utterly sinful. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is recorded in St. Matthew, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 34th verse. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And whoever finds their life will lose it. 
and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly, I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Greetings once again. Happy July 4th weekend. Uh, may God's word richly bless you. Let me start with this one. Now, a couple was celebrating their 25th anniversary. And so they were well known in town for the fact that for 25 years of marriage, they, didn't, they don't even have one conflict. And so during this, this 25th anniversary celebration, the entire town wanted to know what was the secret of their successful marriage. And so the media gathered around and wanted to interview the uh, groom. And so the reporter asked, sir, it's amazingly unbelievable unbelievable how did you make this possible and the husband replied well we have been a happy couple since marriage thanks to our honeymoon in Shimla India the reporter continued sir tell us about it so that all couples can be happy like you so finally the the husband decided to reveal the secret and so he said for our honeymoon we we went to Shimla India I remember the day, it was a beautiful day. There were breathtaking views, and so we decided to go horseback riding. Well, my horse was okay, but my wife happened to have a crazy one. And so a little bit down, a little bit on our ride, the horse jumped and my wife fell off. Well, she dusted herself off and she calmly got, she got, calmly got up and she said, this to the patted the horse said, this is your first time and so she got back on, so she got back on the horse and we continued our ride well a little short time later he jumped again and she fell off and so once again very calmly she got back up patted the horse and said this is your second time and so i, I I thought everything would be fine, so we continued our journey. And then once again, the horse got startled and jumped. This time, my wife fell down, and, she, and when she fell down, she took out a gun from her purse and shot the horse dead. And I shouted at my wife, why did you do that? You killed the poor animal. Very calmly, she looked at me and said, this is your first time. That's it. We are happily after that. All right, kind of related to our text today. So our text is, is, is the latter part of Matthew chapter 10. So the latter part of Matthew chapter 10 is that Jesus gives his disciples instructions before he sends them out. It is called a missionary discourse. So our text picks up on the latter part of it and uh, starts on chapter 10, verse 34. 34 to 36, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring, I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Wait a minute, did you catch that? I thought the mission of Jesus is to bring peace on earth. His coming is, didn't Isaiah say peace on earth and goodwill to men? Is it that why he came? Didn't Jesus say, my peace I leave with you? The peace I give, is the world cannot give? Didn't he tell us to teach us to love our neighbors as ourselves? And why did he say he came to bring a sword? Well, if, you, if we dig deeper into the Greek construction, the Greek language, um, you will find that what the Greek was trying to express 
is, is the result of the gospel. So in other words, the Greek text is exp expressing the result and not the purpose here. The purpose of Jesus is to bring peace, but sometimes the result is strife. Sometimes the result is broken families. Sometimes the result is rejection. And so what Jesus was warning his, his disciples is the fact that when you preach the gospel, not everybody will accept you. In fact, even your own family may turn against you. Now, that's what happened to Jesus in, in his ministry. Before he went to the cross, his brothers and sisters did not believe in him. And so this reminds me of uh, a man named Steve, uh, Steve Cohen. Now, Steve Cohen was the f is the founder of Apple of the Eyes Ministry, a Christian ministry uh, geared towards helping Jewish people find the Messiah. So his story began, he, you know, he grew up in a small town in uh, eastern Washington. Um, his family was Jewish, but they weren't really strict in practicing the Jewish rituals. Um, in fact, they said, he said that the, the closest synagogue was half hour away, but the closest rabbi was four hours away. So his parents weren't going to make the commitment to, to get the, the to get the boys understanding what their Jewish faith is actually about. However, the family did practice the, the high, but the big Jewish holidays like Hanukkah, uh, you know, Passover and other celebrations. Um, they raised the boys with high moral values and his father was always telling them about how the Jewish people were oppressed and also to remind the boys the fact that you can't be Jewish and believe in another religion. Well, by the time Steve uh, was grown enough to attend college, he was looking for something deeper. He wanted to understand his Jewish roots. Well, by the time he got to college, he joined a Jewish fraternity. Unfortunately, he didn't learn a lot there. And as time went on, he met his future wife, which he got married to her. She was a Christian, and he later on became a follower of Jesus. During that time, when he became a follower of Jesus, he was on fire. And so not too long later, he and his wife signed up to be missionaries. Long story short, he happened to be speaking nearby his hometown, and he had invited his parents to attend uh, his his. Uh, his presentation about Jesus in the Passover. Well, before the uh, service, uh, they were invited uh, to come home. So he went home, and he said he remembered that um, it was Super Bowl Sunday, the third quarter. And so, and so he came into the house, and he remembered this was the first time his mother never didn't give him something to eat. Well, then his father spoke up, his father said, you broke with Jewish tradition by believing in Jesus as your Messiah. It has become obvious that this is not a passing fad since you have dedicated your life to telling others what you believe. Therefore, we do not want to have anything further to do with you. Do not write, do not call, do not visit us ever again. If you write, we will throw away your letters. If you call, we will hang up. And if you come to visit, we will close the door on you. They both left heartbroken. Continuing, Jesus warns his disciples. Verse 37, anyone who loves his father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or his daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. But there is good news. In the latter parts of those verses, starting from verse 40, is good news. As followers of Jesus, number one, we connect people to God. Look at verse 40. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. 
So anybody who welcomes you receives your message about Jesus. You change their eternity. They were supposed to perish, but yet now they have eternal life because they welcome you. When they welcome you, they welcome Jesus. When they welcome Jesus, they rel- welcome the Father. Followers of Jesus connect people to God. What a privilege. What a privilege. Isn't that how you and I came to faith in Jesus? There's somebody who connected us to God, somebody who prayed for us, somebody who shared the gospel with us. Followers of Jesus connect people to God. It is a great privilege. In our world today, um, there is a saying, you know, all roads need to God. And so people would say, why do I have to believe in Jesus? You know, I mean, I can't, don't all roads lead to God? Correct. All roads do lead to God. It could be all roads do lead to the maker. You can believe, you can be Buddhist. You can be into Confucianism, Hinduism, atheism, whatever ism you believe, whatever you believe. Yes, all roads do lead to God. But there's only one road that leads to heaven. There's one road to leads to that leads to forgiveness, and that is through Jesus Christ himself. And so that's why Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, I am that way, I am the truth, I am that life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is only one way to heaven, that is through Jesus Christ And there is forgiveness only through Jesus Christ because he paid for our sins on the cross. And so followers of Jesus Christ connect people to God. Followers of Jesus Christ connect people to heaven. What a privilege. Many years ago um, in my church in Fremont, um, we we started an alpha course and at the time, uh, we had everything set up. You know, Alpha Course is a, uh, you know, 10-week program uh, course on the basics of Christianity. It involves uh, sharing meals together, group discussion, and prayer. Well, we were starting to launch this uh, to reach out to our school community. During that time, um, my, my kids were going to preschool, and we met this lady named Susan, who was a uh, Korean, and... And she shared that she would love to come, but she would love her husband to come. She's a believer, but her husband wasn't. And so when we heard about this, uh, we started praying for her husband. And finally, uh, what she did was she left one of our flyers on the coffee table. And uh, when he came home after work to he sit down to relax, he looked at what was on the table, and he picked it up and he started looking through it. It was then that she asked him, I'd like to go. Would you like to attend? And so he said, yes. Well, long story short, we got to know him. And over the course of the weeks, he became a believer. And even we changed his eternity. (laughs) You know, he knew that he, he came to know Jesus. Not only did he come to know Jesus, well, he was baptized and he had all three of their boys baptized as well. What a privilege it is, my friends, to follow Jesus because we change people's eternity. We connect people to God. Second, fo- followers of Jesus are rewarded for being a part of the team. Verse 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. So in so many words, you don't need to be a prophet to receive a prophet's reward. You don't need to be a pastor or a righteous person to receive a righteous person's reward. All you need to do is to be a part of the team. All you need to do is to be faithful and to do your part. You know, oftentimes we see prophets we see great leaders pastors of mega churches but we rarely see who's in the shadows 
we rarely see those behind them supporting them. Here's the amazing thing about this promise. You don't have to be in center stage. You don't have to be in front. All you need to do is to support those who are in front. All you have to do is to be faithful, to play your part, and you receive the same reward as those in front of you. Those who run the computers, those who do the advertisement, those who do the inviting, those who take care of the children, they receive the same reward as those who are speaking in front of the crowd. There's more to the story of Susan. So um, what happened is that um, after her husband uh, became a believer, uh, the kids, we were going to baptize the kids. And what happened was that we had this couple named Barbie and Ken, Ken and Barb, um, who was a very friendly, loving couple. Um, they befriended this Korean couple and offered to sponsor their children in baptism, which they accepted. The wonderful thing is that Ken and Barbara is from Minnesota. This couple is from Korea. Ken and Barb was retired. They're this young family who have young children. And so the amazing thing was that Ken and Barb was just doing their part as part of the team. They sponsored these three kids. Well, last year, I was uh, blessed to have the opportunity to, uh, to attend their memorial. Um, originally, uh, Ken had requested that I would, uh, on email, that I would um, officiate his uh, memorial. But unfortunately, the family did not find his notes and did not know of those wishes. Well, fortunately, I was able to say a few words. Well, after the service, I noticed that there was two uh, late, I mean, two boys in their late teens, early 20s, sitting there, Asian boys, dur during the service. Afterwards, I went up and approached them and found out that they were those two boys uh, that w one of them was in the same uh, class as my one of my kids, and the other one was his brother. It was those two boys that were, that, w that Ken and Barb sponsored. And then we found out that mom and dad uh, is living in South Korea and found out that the older boy uh, had f just finished college and he had enrolled in a Bible college. He intended to be a pastor. I'm like, wow, wow. You know, Ken and Barb just played their part. And here we've affected the eternity of these boys. And one of them is, is answering the call to serve God. Friends, followers of Jesus, are rewarded just for being a part of the team. You don't have to be a prophet. You don't have to be able to, to preach. All you need to do is do your part behind the scenes, whatever that may be. Finally, number three, followers of Jesus are rewarded even for the tiniest act of kindness. Followers of Jesus are rewarded even for the tiniest act of kindness. Verse 42. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to the w one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you that person will certainly not lose their reward. Now notice it starts out with if anyone. The verse is anyone. It doesn't have to be a pastor. It doesn't have to be a prophet doesn't have to be somebody really smart. Anyone can do this. Anyone who gives even a cup of cold water, if you, do you have a cold, cup of cold water? If you have a cup of cold water, you qualify. Okay. Any, that means everyone is qualified. Second, it says the recipient is one of these little ones. In other words, the marginalized, those that are neglected, those who are hurting, those who are in need it might be a homeless person, it might be somebody down on luck, it might be somebody who needs your encouragement. If you give them even a cup of cold water, God remembers. Finally, it says, truly I tell you, which is me, in no way God will ever forget. You know, 
sometimes we look at a cold water it might be something very simple you know something we just go to our refrigerators and just get but what jesus is conveying is the fact that sometimes we do these little things that we forget about but he doesn't maybe it's a it's a phone call to somebody in need maybe it's just a pat on the back maybe it's just a word of encouragement maybe it's just a smile you may not remember but Jesus does remember. He will reward you for even the smallest, tiniest thing, something that you may not even ever remember. He remembers the time when you're dead tired, but yet you continued and, and performed that act of kindness. He remembers every little thing. If you have a cup of cold water, that's something. He even remembers something as little as that. Let me just bring this to a close. Um, I just want to finish off Steve's uh, uh, journey. Um, it's a super long testimony. Uh, you can read it online. But long story short, 14 years later, he gets a phone call uh, from his brother. He finds out that his father has cancer. Now, 14 years, they haven't spoke, haven't communicated, but his brother informed him that his father uh, has cancer. In fact, that his father in the, the, did not want any treatments. In fact, he would rather take his own life than to be on treatment. Well, what happened was that uh, then on May 22nd, 1990, um, his father attempted to take his own life by swallowing a bottle of pills. Well, fortunately, it was unsuccessful. He was released from the hospital and was home. When Steve found out, he immediately uh, drove to the airport and flew in, and he was in his hometown uh, within 10 hours. Unfortunately, when his brother met him at the airport, he told him that, that mom and dad did, is not welcoming him in, the, in, in home. I mean, he's not welcomed home. So he spent time in a hotel. Uh, he called a friend to pray for him, and that, uh, in his mind, he had to see his father before he left. So the next day at 4 p.m., uh, you know, he rang the doorbell. Didn't know what to expect. But a few minutes later, the garage door opened. It was his brother. His brother came out and said, I don't understand it. Of all that has happened in the past, they decided to see you now. So when he walked in, he embraced his father. They both had tears on their eyes. It was a long embrace. And so he prayed and he thanked, uh, he offered to pray and he thanked God for, the, for reconciliation and prayed that God would heal his father. Well, his mother was really touched. However, she and his father were not open to the gospel. In fact, he told him that they could stay in touch. They could talk about anything except Jesus. Well, he th Steve thanked God for the progress, and so eventually he had to leave and go back to his work as a missionary. Well, six months later, six months later, his father was admitted to the hospital, knowing that the end was near. Um, they put him on morphine, and so Steve flew out to spend four days with him talking to him, but once again, he would not hear Jesus. He didn't want to hear Jesus from him. And so after four days, he left. And uh, on, Thanksgiving, on Thanksgiving morning, 1.30 a.m., Steve and his wife was awakened by a phone call. Well, they were expecting the worst, but this was Susan. This was not the brother, this was Susan. Uh, his cousin. Now Susan was a believer. Was a believer. There are times she she was close to uh, she was close to um, uh, his father, and so there are times when Steve would encourage her, "Why don't you share Jesus with him? Just share about your journey." But she was hesitant. She didn't know what to say. But Steve would encourage her and say, "Trust God. Just open your mouth and share what God did for you." Well, the phone calls from Susan uh, said, I did it. I told him about Jesus. 
And so Susan told him very, uh, said very clearly, said, Uncle Bobby, God loves you very much. He sent Jesus, our Messiah, to die for you so that you could have eternal life. Wouldn't you want to receive God's free gift of eternal life? And then she whispered. I pr he said, yes. And right there and then, I pray for him to receive the gift of salvation. And by the way, Susan worked at the same hospital in Portland where the father was admitted to. The next morning, Thanksgiving, Steve had his last conversation with his father, rejoicing that he had come to know Jesus. In Mark chapter 10, verse 29, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mothers or fathers or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields. Followers of Jesus Christ, we have the privilege of connecting people to God. Followers of Jesus Christ are rewarded for just being a part of the team. You don't have to be in front, but you receive the same reward as long as you are faithful. Followers of Jesus are rewarded even for the tiniest act of kindness. Remember, it's a privilege to serve him. May God richly bless you. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanksgiving. We thank you for saving us for dying, sending your son Jesus to die on a cross for all of our sins, to make us righteous. And we thank you for giving us the privilege of sharing that good news, that message to, with those around us, Lord. Help us to remember and be motivated by the fact that this is a privilege. And we thank you that once we go out and do it, you reward us for being a part of the team. And even you remember the smallest things that we do for people. Lord, we thank you, and we thank you, and we pray all this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and a power, and a glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen.